Hello and welcome back to this uh, NPTEL course on principles of polymer synthesis. Yesterday we have finished talking about the radical chain polymerizations, the general in general the radical chain polymerizations. Yesterday was the concluding class and we promised we will start talking about chain copolymerizations from today. Now, as so this is the topic of today principles of chain copolymerization and it will continue until we have covered the principles in more or less some detail. Now, copolymerization let us have a look at what do we mean by that. So, we are saying chain copolymerization. So, basically this is then a type of chain polymerization only. Now, this may of course, include anionic, cationic and radical copolymerization, but in general the principle that we are going to introduce will be valid for all of them. Although in general we will, I mean in specific we will mean that we are talking about radical because we have not talked about anionic and cationic, cop uh, anionic and cationic polymerization, chain polymerization at all it, in any detail. Now, one question one might ask is that what about step copolymerization and say for example, let us say you are talking about chain copolymerization and say you are talking about radical. So, you have a monomer which enters into a radical polymerization. So, you know I am just saying monomer 1 and it can create, so it can create this kind of chain so on and so forth. You have another monomer which could also independently enter into chain polymerization. So, it can create its own chain like this. So, they can actually homopolymerize. Now, the aspect we are going to discuss for chain copolymerization is like you put both of them together under the polymerizing condition. Both of them can individually form their own chains in absence of the other. Now, in presence of the other what can happen is that their reactivities with respect to the growing radical chain or the growing reactive chain might be different and one of them might enter more, one of them might enter less. That means, in the polymer chain there will be both M 1 and M 2 present. In a certain arrangement they will be present. Now, this is the concept of chain copolymerization that you are taking more than one monomer and doing a chain polymerization. Both of them are capable of doing what you call as homopolymerizations. Now, you are going to analyze the system where both of them are present. Some ratios, whatever ratios is there, we will consider the effect of that also in the in the copolymer, so on and so forth. If you consider say corresponding step copolymerization, you know let us say you are talking about reacting a diamine with a diacid. This is a step polymerization. Now, this step polymerization if you are introducing the uh, another monomer in this system like this R double prime to differentiate this from R prime and R NH 2 NH 2 and then maybe R triple prime R CO 2 H and CO 2 H CO 2 H dicarboxylic acid. And this particular system, so these two monomers together will do polymerization, they can do. Now, these two monomers can together form polymer. Now, if you mix these things up, then what you have is a step copolymerizing system. So, just to tell you the differences here, basically you have two monomers when you are talking about a bifunctional monomer where the both the functions are the same but otherwise you could have a monomer which has both the functions different like an amino acid NH2 and CO2H, it can actually react with itself. In that case, you can take maybe maybe R CO2H NH2, this is a polymerizing system in itself, you can put another monomer like this and then this is a copolymerizing system, so on and so forth. So, we will not discuss any further about step copolymerization. Now, we will concentrate solely on chain copolymerization. Now, as I was telling that more than one monomer is present in the system, 
and they will enter simultaneously into the chain. And what we are interested in is the instantaneous copolymer composition. What does that mean is that you start with certain composition of the monomers which is called co-monomer feed composition, co-monomer because you have more than one monomer present in your starting system and feed means you are starting with that. So, it is a feed. So, co-monomer feed composition means at the start your m1 and m2 they are at a certain molar ratio and then what you are doing you are forming a copolymer. Let us say from that starting composition of the co-monomer you are doing less than 5 percent of the conversion and then when the copolymer is forming the composition of that copolymer you are analyzing. So, that is what you call as instantaneous copolymer composition. Okay. That actually can vary if you are further doing a copolymerization, but that is not a, the subject of our discussion at the moment. We are talking about instantaneous copolymer composition. That means a very small percent conversion from the starting co-monomer feed composition. These terms are very important. Co-monomer feed composition you are going into. So, your whatever you are starting m1 and m2 say m1 is 80 mole percent, m2 is 20 mole percent. So, then this information that one is 80 mole percent automatically the other one is 20 mole percent this information constitutes the full information about the co-monomer feed composition. Okay. The question then I, mean, I am going to ask you is at a less than 5 percent conversion instantaneously what is the composition of the copolymer that you are going to get from that. So, what are the factors that are governing those things. So, in order to determine that what we assume is is a terminal model what we call as a terminal model. So, which means suppose you have a growing chain and at the end of it you have say m 1 I am talking about two monomers m 1 and m 2 only. So, two monomers we are talking about not tar polymerization we are not talking about three monomers together two monomers. So, at the end of the chain you have m 1 and then I am putting star star means some reactive center not so telling radical or anion or cation. Now, the second species could be another monomer the so, same monomer m 1 that could add to the growing chain or another monomer m 2 could add to the growing chain. Now, now these monomers the propensity of these monomers to add to this growing chain will only depend on the identity of the last unit not the unit that was there previously that is the terminal model that is the model that we are going to use to simplify the matters to analyze the process. So, at the growing chain end whatever unit is there that will determine whether m 1 will add or m 2 will add not the preceding unit if the preceding unit is m 2 the result will be the same whatever be the result here if the preceding unit is m 1 you will have the exactly same result with respect to this that will depend on the reactivities so on and so forth. Now, let us now start the analysis. So, you have two growing chains m 1 star at the end of it you might have m 1 m 1 or you might have m 2. Now, this can suffer two fates it can either react with m 1 or it can react with m 2 because two monomers are present. Same way your m 2 star can react either with m 1 or it could react with m 2. So, let us say the rate constant for this reaction is k 1 1 the first term indicates the identity of this unit second term second subscript in indicates the identity of this unit that is how we are going to determine this. So, then what will be the species that will be forming again m 1 star only because after that m 1 has added. So, this will be m 1 star like this this is k 1 2 rate constant species will be m 2 star because m 2 has added. So, we are only identifying the last unit here this will be k 2 1 correspondingly it will be m 1 star and this will be k 2 2 and this will be m 2 star. So, what is the rate of disappearance of monomer 1 from this? So, the rate of disappearance of monomer 1 is this reaction has to be considered k 1 1 into m 1 star I am just abbreviating the concentration here into m 1 plus this reaction where m 1 is being consumed. So, it will be k 2 1 into m 2 star 
into m 1. Similarly, minus d m 2 d t will be equal to k 1 2 into m 1 star uh, into m 2 plus k 2 2 into m 2 star into m 2 because you are considering this reaction where m 2 is being consumed and this reaction. So, if you take a ratio of the two d m 1 divided by d m 2, you can immediately see this ratio will tell you the composition of the copolymer. So, this much amount of m 1 has gone into the copolymer, this much amount instantaneous has gone into the copolymer. Now, if you take this ratio, it will be k 1 1 into m 1 star into m 1 plus k 2 1 into m 2 star into m 1 say m 2 divided by k 1 2 into m 1 star into m 2 plus k 2 2 into m 2 star into m 2. Now, let us consider a situation steady state situation. So, that will mean steady state situation will mean that the rate at which this m 1 star is being consumed has to be equal to the rate at which this m 1 star is being produced. Same way the rate at which this m 2 star is being consumed has to be equal to the rate at which the m 2 star is being is being produced. So, because that is the steady state condition for you. So, that the total concentration of the radical remains the constant. So, if you are considering this particular situation in the steady state situation. So, what will be the equation that you want to do? You want to write down here, it will be k 1 2 into m 1 star into m 2 equal to k 2 1 into m 2 star into m 1. So, you see these expressions here k 1 2 into m 1 star into m 2. So, we are considering this reaction. So, this tells you the rate at which the m 1 star is disappearing and what about this one k 2 1 into m 2 star into m 1 that is this expression, expression here. So, this tells you the rate at which the m 1 star is appearing. So, the rate of disappearance of the m 1 star has to be equal to the rate of appearance of m 1 star otherwise the steady state cannot be maintained. So, this is the assumption then that we will make. Now, once we have made this particular assumption if you are telling taking this particular expression here. So, d m 1 divided by d m 2 that will be equal to your k 1 1 into m 1 star into m 1. So, on the top this k 2 1 into m 2 star into m 1 this you replace by this term. So, that will be k 1 2 into m 1 star into m 2 divided by k 1 2 into m 1 star into m 2 plus k 2 2 into m 2 and then this m 2 star you replace by this expression. So, m 2 star from this equation you replace by other terms. So, the m 2 star will be nothing but k 1 2 into m 1 star from this expression into m 2 divided by k uh, 2 1 into m 1. So, this then reduces to your uh, m 1 star will be going from both sides. So, it will become k 1 1 into m 1 plus k 1 2 into m 2 divided by k 1 2 into m 2 k 1 2 into m 2 uh, plus k 2 2 by k 2 1 into k 1 2 uh, m 2 square divided by m 1 
So, now k 1 1 divided by k 1 2. So, what you can do is that you can divide throughout by k 1 2 and what you will get is the following d m 1 divided by d m 2 will be equal to uh, k 1 1 divided by k 1 2 into m 1 plus m 2 divided by k 1 2 has is gone here m 2 plus k 2 2 divided by k 2 1 into m 2 square divided by m 1. Okay. So, from here this k 2 1 comes up here. So, that will be k 2 1 into m 1 k 2 1 into m 1 comes here here k 1 1 divided by k 1 2 into m 1 plus m 2 divided by m 2 into k 2 1 m 1 plus k 2 2 m 2. Okay. So, this is the expression that you get here. Now, if you divide throughout by k 2 1, then what you will get finally is this particular expression m 1 into small r 1 m 1 plus m 2 divided by m 2 into m 1 plus r 2 m 2. So, where your small r 1 is k 1 1 divided by k 1 2 and small r 2 is k 1 2. So, this is uh, small r 2 is sorry k 2 2 divided by k 2 1. So, these are called monomer reactivity ratios r 1 is the reactivity ratio of monomer 1 r 2 is the reactivity ratio of monomer 2. So, the reactivity ratio is then is then the ratio of the rate constant of the reaction with the same species divided by the rate constant of the reaction with the different species. So, basically this ratio k 1 1 divided by k 1 2. So, this is the monomer reactivity ratio. So, the rate constant for this reaction where m 1 star is reacting with m 1 and rate constant for this reaction where m 1 star is reacting with m 2. So, these two rate constants the ratio will be the reactivity ratio of monomer 1 because the identity at the end of the growing chain is m 1. So, that is what we are considering. Similarly, m 2 star the rate constant for the reaction in which m 2 star acts the same species which is m 2 divided by the rate constant of the reaction in which m 2 star acts the other species which is m 1 that ratio is the reactivity ratio of monomer 2. Now, these are very important terms and you have to keep in mind that when you are talking about r 1 and r 2. So, this r 1 and r 2 are valid for this pair only. So, if you are taking monomer 1 and monomer 2 and in this particular pair of co monomers you are determining the value of r 1 and r 2 then these values will be different when you are taking another monomer with respect to say your m 1 is the same if you take the other monomer that is monomer 2 if you change then this k 1 2 will change because k 1 2 is corresponding to the rate constant of m 1 star reacting with m 2. So, if you change the identity of m 2 then k 1 2 will change. So, correspondingly the reactivity ratio will change. So, the reactivity ratio that is specific for a specific monomer pair that is very important to keep in mind. So, if you are saying for example, your r 1 is greater than 1 and r 2 is less than 1 that would actually mean that your m 1 star this thing the growing chain at the end of which m 1 is there that will preferentially add monomer 1 that is what it means that will prefer to add monomer 1 than monomer 2. So, the react because the reactivity ratio of monomer 1 is higher than the reactivity ratio of monomer 2. Now, if r 1 is 0 for example, reactivity ratio of monomer 1 is 0. So, that would mean 
this k 1 1 divided by k 1 2 is 0. So, this particular reaction homopolymerization m 1 star reacting with m 1. So, this particular reaction will not occur at all. So, which means r 1 equals to 0 implies that m 1 does not homopolymerize same thing can be said about r 2. So, that is the concept of reactivity ratio. So, if r 1 is greater than 1 and that would mean that your m 1 star when I say m 1 star that is that means m 1 is there at the end of the reacting chain that adds preferentially to m 1. If r 1 is 0 then m 1 does not homopolymerize if r 1 is less than 1 then m 1 star adds preferentially to the other monomer which is m 2. Now, we also will define these terms for example, capital F 1 this is the mole this is the this is basically the mole fraction of monomer 1 in the copolymer that means, this is the mole fraction of the monomer 1 in the copolymer which actually indicates that the corresponding amount of monomer has gone into the copolymer. So, this F 1 capital F 1 is nothing but 1 minus F 2 F 2 is the mole fraction of monomer 2 in the copolymer this is equal to d m 1 divided by d m 1 plus d m 2 because this much of monomer has gone into the copolymer we are talking about instantaneous copolymerization. So, d small amount of monomer has gone in monomer 1 and this is the total amount of 2 monomers that have gone in. So, this ratio gives you capital F 1 which is your mole fraction of monomer 1 in copolymer correspondingly small f 1 is the mole fraction of monomer 1 is the co mono in the co monomer feed which is nothing but m 1 divided by m 1 plus m 2. So, this is the mole fraction of monomer 1 in the co monomer feed. So, if you put the expressions if you compare these two expressions you can actually derive some useful things like capital F 1 is equal to small r 1 F 1 square plus F 1 F 2 divided by r 1 F 1 square plus 2 F 1 F 2 plus r 2 f 2 square this is a useful expression and also this d m 1 divided by d m 2 I mean all these terms are very similar with respect to say this expression here you can simplify also like this r 1 x plus 1 divided by 1 plus r 2 divided by x where x is nothing but m 1 divided by m 2. Now, Let us consider a case where this multiplication r 1 r 2 is equal to 1. This is the situation which is called ideal co polymerization. The, the term ideal does not have anything to do with the most desirable or not. I will tell you what the term ideal means in a little while. So, r 1 r 2 equals to 1 this is ideal copolymerization in this kind of situation the probability of m 1 star or m 2 star reacting with m 1 versus m 2 is equal which means that the propensity of m 1 to add to the growing chain will not depend on whether you have m 1 star at the end or m 2 star at the end, which actually will transpire to this kind of relation k 1 1 divided by k 1 2 equals to k 2 1 divided by k 2 2, because r 1 r 2 equals to 1. So, you can directly come to this particular expression here. This particular thing will become more clear when we talk about the probability and all what does this actually mean that means, the probability of addition of this m 1 star to m 1 will be equal to the probability of addition of m 2 star to m 1 nothing else. This does not tell you about the relative reactivities of m 1 and m 2 that we will come to after. 
So, this is the relationship that will be that will hold under this kind of situation. Now, R1 R2 equals to 1, this particular term R1 R2 equals to 1, this particular condition can be satisfied by many different scenarios. For example, you can have R1 equal to R2 equal to 1. or you can have r 1 greater than 1, r 2 less than 1 or the opposite and still the multiplication may be equals to 1. But here one thing is important to mention that this term here, this means that basically you have a random copolymerization. So, the monomer 1 and monomer 2 will be placed randomly, whether they will be in perfect random placement or imperfect random placement in the copolymer that will depend on the relative values of r 1 and r 2. If R1 and R2 both are equal to 1, that will mean that a perfectly random copolymerization will result. If R1 is greater than 1 and R2 is less than 1, that will mean the monomer 1 which corresponds to R1 is more reactive than monomer 2 which corresponds to R2. So, there will be a larger proportion of the more reactive monomer which is the monomer 1 that will be now placed in the copolymer in a random placement. So, still monomer 1 and monomer 2 will be placed in a random placement because the probability that m 1 star will add to m 1 and the probability that m 2 star will add to m 1 both are equal. So, correspondingly then it will be a random placement and the other probabilities are also equal we will talk about that in detail after. So, it will be a random copolymer that will be produced, but whether it is perfectly random or not depends on the values. If R1 equals to R2 equals to 1, that will be a perfect random placement. If R1 is greater than 1, there will be more proportion, R1 is greater than 1 and R2 is less than 1 because the multiplication is equals to 1, there will be more proportion of the more reactive monomer that goes into the copolymer, less proportion of the less reactive monomer 2 that goes in, but when they go in, they will still be placed in a random placement. So, that is the idea here. So, if your R 1 is more than 1 as I told you more proportion of that goes in. Now, what happens if you keep changing these values and what happens if one of the values is much greater than 1, one of the values is much less than 1 means R 1 and R 2 values are very different. So, for that let us go into this particular slide here in the PowerPoint presentation. So, here you will see dependence of the instantaneous copolymer composition y axis is the mole fraction, y axis is the mole fraction here of the monomer in the copolymer. So, monomer 1 in copolymer, it is capital F 1 is the mole fraction of monomer 1 in the copolymer. x axis is the mole fraction of monomer 1 in the co-monomer feed that is small f 1. So, if you see this particular graph here, so for all these graphs r 1 r 2 equals to 1, for all these graphs r 1 r 2 equals to 1 and all these values that you are getting are the values that you set the value of R 1 2. That means, if you set the value of R 1 equals to 1, then the value of R 2 is automatically equals to 1 and then you get this kind of linear graph. So, what will happen? So, for example, if you are looking at say 0 0.5 mole fraction, 0 0.5 mole fraction here on the x axis, that means 0 0.5 is the uh, mole fraction of monomer 1 and then 0.5 is the mole fraction of monomer 2 in the co-monomer feed. The copolymer will be produced with the exactly the same composition. So, copolymer also will have 0.5 mole fraction of monomer 1 which will be indicated by this point if you go draw a horizontal line here and 0.5 mole fraction of monomer 2. Now, what happens if the value of R 1 becomes higher and higher than 1? Of course, R 1 and R 2 multiplication is 1 that means, the R 2 is going down. Suppose, the value of R 1, so the, so the curves will become like this. Now, this is the reason why this is called an ideal copolymerization system because these curves are very similar in resemblance to your ideal liquid mixture vapor liquid equilibrium curves. They also look like this and that is the reason why you call this as ideal copolymerization, nothing else, nothing like what you desire or not. And here for example, if you are looking at say 
the value of 10. So, this keeps increasingly becoming bent like this as you keep increasing the value of r 1. So, correspondingly the value of r 2 is decreasing. So, let us say the value of 10 that means for this curve your r 1 is 10 and r 2 is 0 0.1. So, the monomer reactivity ratios the ratios are very very different monomer reactivity ratio of monomer 1 is 10 monomer 2 is 0 0.1 that will mean an overwhelming proportion of monomer 1 now goes into the copolymer irrespective of what the monomer feed composition is in the co-monomer mixture. That means, if your R 1 value is 10 and R 2 value is 0 0.1 no matter what you do if you want to put substantial amount of monomer 2 into the copolymer you might think that your co-monomer feed to start with two monomers you are taking right you might take a large amount of monomer 2 because its reactivity is lower very low large amount of monomer 2 very small amount of monomer 1. So, you expect maybe a lot of monomer 2 will go into the copolymer that will not happen. If your R 1 is much greater than 1 I mean if your R 1 and R 2 are very different and the multiplication is 1 then it is very difficult to have any appreciable amount of monomer 2 into the copolymer irrespective of whatever is the composition of the co-monomer mixture. So, you can see from this graph. So, here for example, if you look at the power point slide here, here for example, you see the mole fraction of monomer 1 is close to 0 this point somewhere here, but so that means the mole fraction of monomer 2 is that much higher. Okay. So, say 0 0.9 close to 0 0.9 90 mole percent may be monomer 2, but what is the composition of the copolymer that is given by say for example, this point if you go by a vertical line it will be this point. So, you will see that the composition of the monomer 2 is something like this here it is close to say 0 0.55 or 0 0.58 I do not know the value say 0 0.58. So, the at least then 58 mole percent will be monomer m 1 and rest will be monomer m 2. So, you will see that even at very low amount of monomer 1 present in the co monomer mixture a large amount of monomer 1 actually has gone into the copolymer because of the high difference in the reactivity ratio. So, it becomes very difficult to produce a copolymer with substantial amount of monomer 2 no matter how much of monomer 2 you take in the starting monomer mixture because the reactivity ratios are very different. So, we will stop here today and in the next class we will elaborate on this further. So, thank you for your attention and see you then in the next class.